Hey, HTDA, and today I want to show you Final Factory. This game is releasing next week, and I've been having a ton of fun in the early access, which the developers were so gracious to grant me access to. Now, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but this game is really addictive, and it's actually pretty streamlined to play, even though it's pretty straightforward, and it actually feels a lot less linear in terms of building orders than many similar games like it. Now, this is a game that, similar to, say, Factorio, has enemies on the map that will attack you, but you can play without them. So you can disable them, uh, completely turn them off, casual, pacifist, etc. So they're not really a problem if you keep them enabled, but if you don't want them at all, you can turn them off. I will be playing with them, though, so let's dive in. Meet my little spaceship over here that I can fly around with and that I can use to mine ore from asteroids. Now this is basically the unit we'll be um, playing as and we get to explore this entire galaxy. Now this galaxy is really really big so this is not even close to a large portion of the map. There are some enemies on the map already but we won't want to come close to those anytime soon. And we have different types of asteroids which we can mine. There's also a really nice tutorial that really helps you understand the basic game mechanics. Not everything might be intuitive if you play without it so I really recommend that you follow this. And the best thing about this tutorial is that you can actually have it play videos that literally show you what to click in what order in order to do whatever it suggests that you should be doing. Of course, the tutorial will slowly fade out and at some point the game will say, well, generally try to go in this direction, but how you get there, that's up to you. But especially for the early game, it's really helpful to have this. Now, some other things that we have, we have, of course, a technology tree that we can start to progress through. It's pretty big, so we'll be working with that for quite a while. In terms of technology, we have these different types of science here. Some of it's asteroid science. We'll get a planetary science that will come from planets. Uh, let's see, do we have any planets? Yeah, we have a planet Ooh, on the map over here. So that's probably where we're going to get that. And then there's different types of science after that as well. Sorry about all the flickering around. That's just me doing that. That's not the game. There is some health. This is the health of our unit. We have a fleet that we can carry around with us. So little spaceships flying around with us that we will be able to build. And then there's some other things that will be mattering later on in the game. Now, let's get going. Now, I've done some general mining of stuff. As you can see, this is really straightforward to do. You do need to pick up these units really quickly, otherwise they disappear. So you can just spam mine them at the uh, at, at your leisure, basically. You do need to actually actively pick things up. And I've built a couple of these combat ships. These are bats, they are called. These are little sp tiny ships that I can send the enemy. I can actually tell them to swarm somewhere. And then they will start attacking whatever is in that area and then will, they will return to me. Uh, these are not going to be hugely helpful initially, but well, it gets us started at least. Now, the next thing we want to do is start automating our mining construction. And in order to do that, we're going to have to build some structures. First of all, we are going to have to uh, queue up some mining stations. We can just handcraft them. Now, as you can see, this will require a lot of different types of resources, but as long as you have the raw resources on you, these are the things that I just mined, uh, this will take care of itself. Now, as you can see, it actually takes quite a little while to make all this stuff. So we definitely want to start automating stuff as quickly as we can. Now, just to walk you through some of the other basic units, we have an atomic printer, which is basically kind of a smelter that makes basic materials. And then we have an assembler, that makes more complicated materials. So one is going to make components, which are basically made from the three different types of resources we have available from those three different types of asteroids that you just saw. And then we have intermediates, which are basically the advanced version of those same things as well. But there will be a lot more stuff coming on this list in the short term, but first things first, we want to start automating some stuff. Now, in order to do that, we need these mining stations we're also going to need some power for our mining stations. And we also are going to need some connectors. These are basically belts and maybe some cargo um, holds as well to make sure we have somewhere to leave all that stuff. Now you can just drag things to your bar. That's really helpful. That makes it easier to reach. And as you can see, I need to place my mining station somewhere close to my asteroid. Then I can place them. Now, as you will see, it's not actually building anything. That is because I actually need a construction bot as well. Now, this is really straightforward to make. I usually like making two of them just so I have uh, two of them flying around. And now I have a miner. Now, this still doesn't do anything because it needs to have some power. So I can power it up, let's say, like this. It's still not working. And that is I because I need mining ships as well. Now, these miner bots are going to collect the ore and bring it to this station. 
So I'm also going to connect a little belt piece to this and then I'm going to add in a storage unit, a cargo hold. This has a little bit more storage than the actual miner itself, it only has a single slot. As you can see, as soon as I build my miners, they are being sent out to the asteroid, automatically start to collect and they're assigned now to this mining station. The thing is, however, that these mining bots will actually run out. So I am going to have to um, non-stop build these mining bots. They don't run out really fast, so don't worry about that, but you do need to replace them and you definitely do not want to do that by hand. Now we're going to need a couple of other things in order to actually build the, those ships by themselves, but I just want to show you that you can easily remove things as well and then just replace them so everything gets refunded so you actually get the building back. And you can keep your builds a little bit more compact like this if you want to. Now what you can also do is you can actually use this copy function over here to select a building that you already have, let's say something like this. Now this is of course a very bad example considering how tiny this construction is, but you get the point. Um, and then I can say, well, let's build one of them, those same structures right next to that. And it will use all the different things that you already have and just copy and place them in place. Now, let's see, I want to start building a atomic printer and I'm going to set this to make low density structures. And this is uh, going to use the bauxite that we are uh, mining over here and turn that into these low density structures. Now you can see a couple of things happening. First of all, we need more power. So let's say we put another solar panel over there. I'm actually going to turn this around, I think. Let's see. And place that like so. And then we need a heat sink attached to this because oh, it helps if you actually connect it. We need a heat sink attack attached to this, a heat exchanger it's called, I believe. And this is going to make sure this doesn't actually overheat. So if you have more producing buildings in a... Uh, in a station, you're going to need to connect more things to that. Now, we are actually making some atomic printers now, but we are not actually producing anything because yet again, we need a couple of these mining bots to get things going. Now, another really awesome thing is that you can actually use a cut function as well. So this is the function over here. You can just cut a building. It will automatically be removed by your bots. And then you can just say, okay, maybe I want to place it a little bit further away from my existing base and move it very simply like this. Any resources in the building will be uh, saved, so you can just loot them like this. And it's very easy to kind of redesign your base like doing that. So what you can also do, for example, is say, oh, okay, I have a little basic layout over here. I'm going to have to repeat this build several times. Well, I can just copy that and then I can... Place that over here, save it as a blueprint, give it a name and a description, and then you can easily reuse that either in this playthrough or next ones. Now, this is not really that complicated, so we're not going to save that just yet. Um, oh, these are actually stopping to work because this is entirely full. So let's move on to the next phase. Um, let's see, I want a thing like here. Now, the nice thing over here is because this will detect that there's multiple different types of resources in this system, it will actually automatically ask you what you want to filter. In this case, I don't want the box side to move through here, but I do want to make sure the low density structures are being exported. Because I, of course, want to start making some more complicated things in order to make the mining drones. Let's see, what do we actually need? We need plasma engines and we can make those over here, I believe. Um, over here, these are the plasma engines. So we can start making those like this. Now we are going to be running a low on power yet again. So let's add some more power to this. Maybe add some power to that side as well. And then last but not least, we are going to have to go to the technology tree. And we want to start researching the ship assembly tech because this will allow us access to the actual ship assembler. And of course that is actually going to, you guessed it, assemble our ships for us. In other words, making some mining drones. Now we are going to have to make one of those, so we'll be right back. Okie dokie, so I have one of those. I just queued up a lot of other stuff as well, just so we have some um, spare materials. Then I'm going to once again have to set something. In this uh, case, it's a filter for the plasma engines. And then I'm going to connect a, a nice little um, ship assembler over here. Now you can see this is once again overheating, so we're going to have to make another one of these assemblers. Let's just cancel whatever I had queued up. I actually had one of those queued up already. There we go. I knew this was coming, right? Uh, there we go. And then we still need to add some more power to it somewhere. Let's say on the bottom over here. 
And now you can actually see we get a warning that there is a structural problem. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to remove this for a moment. I'm going to add a space station, a station core over here. Now this big unit is actually a reinforcing type of structure that keeps your uh, stations intact. And then I can uh, attach one of these struts to the system. And as you can see, the alarm for the um, structure is now gone. However, I still have a um, heating as well as a power issue. I'm going to need to solve that. So let's add that one in over here. And then hopefully with some more power, I can get that solved as well. There we go. We have all the arrows now being handled. And now if we set this to um, make some minor bots, those. I'm actually low on power once again. It is working, it's just not working really fast. And as you can see, all my miners are now getting populated. Now I also made uh, a couple of these small mining structures at the other two of the asteroids. Just so uh, I have the base materials coming in. And what is really handy is that you can just uh, control click, shift click on these buildings. And there you go, then you can easily just pick everything up. So they're really convenient just flying around and picking up more items. Now the early game in this game is not really complicated at all, but I do think it's really fun to make your little uh, bases look really organized and, and nice. Uh, it's actually not entirely trivial to do so because things will only stick to the sides in certain points. Um, and of course you, you have to work with the different ty types of block sizes, but it's a fun little puzzle to make things look nice. Now I did rearrange a couple of things as you can see, and I think we settled here on a pretty nice kind of... Um, mining drone producing facility what i've also done is i actually uh, put a atomic printer on the basic mining facilities that i have over here for the very simple reason that we are not using the raw resources for anything because we want to immediately transport all of those raw resources into their slightly more advanced thing so we had the low density structures before this is making medium density structures yes we are still in the early game uh, and what is this making? I think it was circuit boards or something like that. Yeah, AI controller circuits. So this is just made from silica. And as you can see, I'm using the exact same layout for all of these different buildings because, well, that makes things look really organized. Now, the next thing on the list is actually making some more complicated stuff. However, we were getting some free research from uh, just completing the tutorial steps and we've run out of those now. So what I need to do now is actually start automating my science as well. Because I want access to nifty things like cargo logistics and stuff like that to be able to transport things across larger distances. Now in order to do that, we are going to need these asteroid research stations along with of course ships. Because we need the asteroid research bots to actually populate them. Now, first things first, let's get things going. So I am going to build a whole bunch of these things, uh, assuming it will let me. I'm not entirely sure why it's not letting me do, build them closer. I do want to make sure they're all nicely aligned because otherwise my OCD can't handle that. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. And then we are going to make some of these bots. Now you can see these things are not expensive at all. So maybe just add like, I don't know, something like 20. I think it's four per station, right? Yes. And of course we are going to need to actually power this. Now, as soon as I am going to complete my first few bots, this will actually start working. And as you can see, it will now start, I don't know, exploring this asteroid for science. Not entirely sure how that works, but it works. And I don't think we need to question it. Now you will see, slowly my research ticking up as you can see it's not particularly fast but we did just go from five to six and of course i'm adding in more and more of these drones as we go again these are going to run out so we are going to need to replace them at some point so we also want to automate that in order to automate the asteroid research bots we're going to need two different types of resources so this is where the real game starts actually um, we are going to need the AI controllers from the silica all the way below and we're going to need some more plasma engines like we've done before. Now luckily we already have a building that's actually producing plasma engines because that is this structure over here. So let's see, let's just copy that like so um, and then maybe flip it around like this. Let's see, can I actually build it like this? I think I can, yes. And this is going to produce that like we want. Now we don't need this strut just yet. What we do need is a logistics bay because we need to bring this 
uh, to a place that is going to connect with an area that is actually going to have access to the silica that we have over here. So in order to make that happen, we are going to be making a hub over here. Now this is a logistics bay, which is kind of like a storage unit, but slightly smaller. But this will allow me to connect my cargo ships to it. And as you can see, cargo ships have a very long line. They can, tr can transport things over very long distances. We actually also have a different bot for that, the inserter bot, which works very similar, but it only does so in a very small distance. So I don't know. You should probably be using the uh, cargo bots a lot more. Now, let's see. We can actually use this line. If I put myself on the same line and I move down, then I can kind of figure out where my um, silica construct is going to be. So we can copy this base and then make sure that this is nicely aligned with the other one. Like this. We can actually remove the storage center because we're not going to need that. And then once again, we are going to add a logistics bay to this as well. Now what I can do is I can actually connect this like so. And let's see if I connect this one like that, then they will enter at the same area. And then somewhere in the middle, I can put down one logistics bay, two logistics bays, uh, nice and tight next to each other. Flip this other way around. Uh, is this connected? Now it is connected. Now it's green. There we go. And as you can see, we have the first uh, circuit boards coming in here already. We have now the um, plasma engines coming in here as well. Now we, of course, do need to make sure this has power in order to, to de actually deliver this. And now what we can do is we can attach two things with filters to that. So one is going to have the plasma engines and one is having the circuit boards. And then we can add a little production station over here. And this is going to be making asteroid research bots. There we go. As you can see, they are already being produced. Now, once again, I have a overheating issue. So let's make sure we solve that. And we are also going to need to add in some more power. Maybe actually we do it something like this and this. And then we can move the these away and we have a nice symmetric looking production facility so now we have basically infinite science so i can start queuing up all of these nice little things like fleet command which allows me to carry around more ships by myself and actually at this point you have different directions in which you can go you can just load up on ships and things like that or you can start focusing on things like lasers and upgrading your facilities making defense platforms actually sounds very useful as well uh, we have some exploration things we can do so that's the things i'm going to focus on for now but you can just start upgrading your fleets and upgrading your ships and then start doing combat yourself. There's a lot of different ways in which you can take even this early in the game. So I've done some research and I now have unlocked defense platforms. So I think it might be a good idea to build maybe a platform, something like this is not a defense platform. This is over here. So we have a nice little defensive line between us and the ships that are down in there. So if I place them down like this. Uh, what happened? There you go. I think I right clicked this by accident. That sometimes happens. I want to kind of get this away from my mouse cursor and then I click the actual building and it removes it. Anyway, uh, probably have a little bit of power on the inside so it's not in the offensive line from the enemy ships. And then we're going to need to populate this with bats. Interesting. So um, you can actually set the attack range as well. I'm not entirely sure why you would want to set this very low. There's probably a good reason for that. I just don't know it. Uh, well, actually, we might get into combat straight away. So this might be a reason to kind of um, reduce this so they don't start offensively attacking all these ships over here. And then again, I don't know if that's necessarily a problem. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I actually attracted the attention of one of them. Where are you going? Where are you going? Hello? Okay, um, he went on holiday, apparently. Uh, let's see, in order to actually make those ships, we are once again going to need some basic materials, I think. We need AI controllers and plasma engines. Hey, look, what are we making over here? I know, right? I was fiddling around a little bit with these uh, solar panels, but we're going to stick them back to where they belong, over here. And then... Oh, I did it again, didn't I? Yeah, there we go. 
And then we are going to need to add in two more of these outgoing ports. Once again for the plasma engines and once again for the AI controllers. There we go. And then we can add in another one of these ship assemblers. Not over there. Not over there. Connected. Actually connected to the rest of the building. And then these can start making combat ships. There we go. Little bats. And look, it's automatically populating my battle station. And yeah, as I thought, the ships are instantly starting to attack the enemy over here. Although I'm not entirely sure if that's a problem. Because, you know, I mean, we want them to be killed anyway. So that's fine. I can actually give my ships to this thing as well. Now, I do need to remember I don't actually have any ships myself left now anymore. But uh, that's not really a problem as long as I don't stray too far away. Um... Apparently they start clearing out the enemy over here. Now the interesting thing is that you do actually get some science from destroying the enemy as well. I have no idea what's up with that. That didn't actually happen in my earlier playthrough. So I'm not sure where these enemy ships are going. Um, but anyway, uh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. You can just start destroying the uh, enemy buildings and enemy ships over here. Oh, look, look, they're all swarming back in now. So this shouldn't take too long to clear up. And look, now we have some basic defenses. Let's um, build these out a little bit further. Look, we have a lot of these defense platforms now. And they're all um, nicely guarded by a lot of these uh, bats. I've built some bats for myself as, uh, as well. And I've actually uh, decided to, that I kept running out of these bloody um, robotic parts. A little bit more advanced units of the um, medium density structures. So I added in another copy-paste of the building that we already had and just added another assembler to it. Now, uh, as you can see, we are actually getting attacked by the enemy every now and then. And we don't seem to be having too much issue fighting them off, so that's good. And since we have a little bit of a defensive line in every direction now, I actually think we will be safe for a very long time because it doesn't seem like the enemy is sending too heavy attacks at us at the moment. Now, what you can also see happening is that the fog is kind of creeping back in. So we, we are not entirely sure what's out here. We can't actually almost see our science stations anymore. Now, of course, we can solve that by doing some new science, specifically exploration. And this will give us access to um, this exploration center. And this will actually keep the dark fog explored for us. You all can also just, just fly into here and push it back a lot. And it will stay cleared out for a very long time. But as you can see, you do need to like really push it out. Because if you don't go far enough, it will actually push back in all, uh, again. But if you do move out a little bit further. And you make sure you, ooh, you clear out a bit of a larger area. At some point, it does stay kind of cleared up for a pretty long time. So you, you don't run into trouble too quickly. Okay, so I've built a couple of these uh, exploration centers now. So let's put them on the bar and let's zoom out a little bit I, we do have the planet over here we have some other interesting things over here so what i'm thinking is maybe we should start expanding our territory a little bit in this direction now in order to do that we are going to of course place down one of these research centers let's see i do think they have connecting pieces it seems to the side like so and then what i want to do is actually connect that maybe to a station core not like that let's make sure it's centered i clicked a little bit too fast there there we go and then we also need to make sure we actually have some defense because well this is not going to defend itself there's literally no defense in here so if we're going to be expanding let's add some defense platforms to that as well now of course we are going to need to make sure we power all of this so maybe something like this we actually seem to need some um, heat exchangers as well. Where are we going to put those? Maybe something like over here. Then we actually need some more power so we can fill out that one as well. Look, look that looks, uh, looks pretty organized. Now we can add more and more ships in here. We'll have a total of 40 of these bats defending a single one of these stations. And... There's just one thing missing, I think. And look at, by the way, at how far this is pushing out the fog. So this is really convenient. We can see everything coming from a long distance as long as we build a couple of these. Now, what I also want to do is 
uh, go back to the technology tree because this is not actually going to repair itself. We do have access to that technology here, station repair. So if we research this, this shouldn't take too long with all of the uh, bots we have. As you can see, it's uh, racking up pretty quickly. Uh, this is going to unlock a repair center, with, which when attached to a station will regenerate lost health. So that means that if this ever gets attacked, and as you can see, it actually got damaged a little bit just by the enemy over here, because that's why the health bar is showing, uh, this will start repairing itself by default. So I have a couple of these repair centers now, and let's see, these are pretty tiny actually. It's kind of like a syringe that you stick in, your, in the side of your building. There we go. Um, but I think this means that now if this gets attacked whatsoever, it will start repairing itself. So that should be really nice. And I've actually made a copy of ex that exact same building over here. So I've started to expand further and further. Now you can actually see there are some enemies in here as well. Now, from this point on, you can go in a lot of different directions once again. Because as you noticed, I haven't really been focusing on upgrading my actual base. While there's a lot of materials that we can actually research. I haven't been focusing on that either. Um, there's a lot of things we can still automate. But there's also a lot of exploring that we can do. Because as you can see over here, for example, there's an ancient treasure here. And that is because we killed some enemies and they will drop some interesting loot every now and then. So you could just go around and start killing the enemies by yourself. Now a really easy way to do this is there's 20 of these ships in a single station. As you can see I can take around like 50 of them right now. And if I just have them collected I can just transfer them to myself. They will start to be, to be repopulated by the, uh, the construction unit we have over here that's working on that. But I'm f flying around with a little fleet of myself. Now you can actually uh, kick some of these units out of your fleet if you want. I have a random I think, mining bot in my fleet for some reason. So I can just say, oh, destroy that. I don't want that in there uh, because I want more attack vessels, for example. I can do that. So I can just say, okay, let's go here. Let's uh, pick those up as well. Uh, can I? Yeah, now it's 50 bots. So two of them are construction bots, but the other ones are all offensive bots. And now I can take the fight to the enemy ah, if I want. Blue planet. Ooh. Organics here they prove useful in our efforts later on. They hold the power of the darkness within them, fully unaware. And this is the mystery voice that is guiding us through this game. As you can see, I still have all my 50 bots actually. And we are easily take, taking them out like so. Some of the robots as you venture out further will start becoming more and more powerful. As you can see these things are shooting a lot harder than the previous ones we found. But as you can see there are no match for a couple of upgraded bats. And it's just 50 of them right now. But I think we actually have access to further upgrades as well. Let's see. Uh, Fleet Command 3. Another 20 that we can add to the mix. We have some more upgrades for the bat. So as you can see, I'm not even at maximum power just yet. Now, as I mentioned, we do get some nice things you can actually pick up. This is a radiator artifact, which is basically the same thing as the heat exchanger that I just showed you. But it's actually going to reduce the power by a lot more. So there's kind of like more efficient versions of buildings that you can collect. I have a feeling we're going to have to do something with this Terra world as well. Um, what is this? A stabilizer artifact. It's basically the same thing as a station core, I think. Um, but just, again, a more upgraded version of that. There's also an obelisk here that we might be able to jumpstart somehow. Not entirely sure. Can I shoot at it? I don't think that's going to cut it. There's probably something else we can do this with something uh, that we can do with that later on. There's a lot of those actually around. And we also have this building over here. This is an ancient portal that once again, let me boost through there for a moment. Um, your sensors should detect a faint source of energy. Perhaps you could give it the jump start. So there is a lot of interesting things around this uh, galaxy that we can interact with, that we can do stuff with. But I think this is a very good moment to stop this first episode. I am going to make a, more, a couple more episodes about this because honestly, it's a lot of fun to play it. Um, it's a... Actually, let me know in the comments, is this easy to follow along? I, I did go quite quickly through some of these earlier builds, but as you can see, they are not really complicated. And I do want to kind of focus on making a couple of more uh, larger, complicated, intricate builds. Um, but those will be in the next episodes, of course. 
Also let me know what is your first impression about this game because honestly I don't know what it is but it's really fun and addicting to me so I'm hoping it is the same for you as well. Either way if you're still here you're awesome and I do hope to catch you in the next one.